Good morning. Welcome to Cornerstone Community Church on this Palm Sunday. What? How did it how did that happen? Palm Sunday. And you might have been handed one of these on the way in. And I see some everybody wave them. Come on. <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, hey, we're going to, uh, I'm going to start off with prayer, and then uh, during the first song, we'll have, uh, the kids will come, and they'll, they'll have a little parade going, so uh, I'll probably hold this with my pick and see, maybe not, I'm not sure if that'll work. So let's, let's bow our heads and pray together for this service. Father God, thank you for Easter coming, thank you for Good Friday coming, Lord, as we look ahead on this Palm Sunday, Lord, and remember... I pray for our church community here. I pray for uh, everyone here and uh, health concerns. I know there's some of those going on this morning in our community. I just pray for uh, each of us, Lord, and and uh, help us to pray for each other and lift each other up. I just ask that you would be in our service, be with us here together as we lift your name high, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, kids, if you'd like to... Uh, Hey, there they go. Okay, and, and it doesn't just have to be kids. If you're a kid at heart and you want to right. walk kids around with heart. them, please feel free. There we go. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. Feel free to stand. We turn to you. Hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you, we long for you, cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day, in your presence all our fears are washed away. Washed away, Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises, Hosanna. the day in your presence all our fears are washed away they're washed away Hosanna Hosanna you are the God who saves us worthy of all our praises Hosanna Great job, kids. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> All right.
We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. Our God, He holds a victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. He hung upon that cross and he rose up from that grave. My God, still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Cause we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Cause we were the beggars. Now we're royalty, we were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. Your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Just to the heavens, your faithfulness stretches to the sky, your righteousness is like the mighty mountain. Your justice flows like the ocean's tide. I will live my voice to worship you, my King. I will find my strength in the shadow of your wings. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithful. 
fullness stretches to the sky. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountain, yeah. Your justice flows like the ocean's tide. my voice to worship you my king I will find my strength in the shadow of your wings I will live my voice to worship you my king I will find my strength in the shadow of your wings. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness. Stretches to the sky. You stood before creation. Eternity in your hands You spoke the earth into motion My soul now to send You stood before my failure You carried the cross for my shame Sin weighed upon your shoulders, my soul now to stand. So what can I say? What could I do? Offer this heart, oh God. Completely to you. So I walk upon salvation, your spirit alive in me. It's time to declare your promise, my soul now to stand. What can I say? What could I do? Offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. Cause what can I say? What could I do? But offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. Completely to you. With arms high and heart abandoned In all of the one who gave it all I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrender All I am is yours I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned 
in all of the one who gave it all i'll stand my soul lord to you surrender all i am is yours i'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all of the one who gave it all i'll stand my soul lord to you surrender all i am is yours all i am is yours all i am is yours i'll pray for our offering Lord, all that we are is yours. You made us. You, you created us. You knit us together before time, before you knew everything about us. Lord, we just thank you that you made a plan for our salvation. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he rose and that we get to sing praises to him. And Lord, we thank you that <clears throat> you provide for all of our needs. Everything we have is a gift from you. And now we give back, we take this offering and we pray that it would be used to bring more to your kingdom, to bring, to let others know about your love. We pray that you would help us to be cheerful givers, and we pray for the harvest. Lord, help us to, to bring you the harvest. Help us to be have hearts ready. Help us, have, help us to have hearts that long to tell others about you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated.
one more time that last line. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Amen. And I think at this time we're going to have our announcements. Actually forgot the announcement sheet. Does somebody near the front have a bulletin on you? <laughs> Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it. What was that, Lauren? No announcements. I'll be sleeping. I, I don't think so quite. I hope not, at least. I uh, want to give you guys a heads up. Sharefest is coming up. That's something we're excited about. Uh, and actually, I think this is... Yeah. Sharefest is coming up. That's something we're excited about. We are also excited about VBS that is happening on the 12th through 16th of June. So we need help. We need volunteers. If you've come to our VBS, you know there's a lot of kids that come and get to experience Jesus' love. That is a good and praiseworthy and wonderful thing. So if you can come help, that would be excellent. We would love that. I also want to call attention, we are having a Easter sunrise uh, celebration, an Easter sunrise service, 7.30, out on the lawn next week. If you are an early riser, this is perfect for you, and if you're not an early light riser, you'll get to come and see me in the same boat. So uh, we're going we're gonna to be out there 7.30, we'll bring chairs out there, uh, and we'll uh, have a little sunrise service, uh, music, uh, some uh, uh, a time of sharing and celebrating that our Lord is risen. Then we'll come inside and have coffee and donuts. So if you'd like to join us for that, please feel free. I believe Jeanette, I'm looking for Jeanette, no Sunday school next week. Is that correct? So no Sunday school next week. We won't be, we'll be taking a break for Easter and we'll be coming back. And kids, if you come next week for our Easter services, there are going to be a couple of things specifically for you. I know there's going to be an egg hunt after the service, and rumor has it some uh, small feathery friends may show up during kids' worship. You will have to come then to find out. All right? That a deal? Mostly nodding heads. All right, we're going to go with it. Good deal. Christy, were there any other announcements I was supposed to highlight this week? All right. Well, hey, kids, let's let you go. If you are from kindergarten through fifth grade, uh, Rochelle is back there. And is that Caitlin too? Yep. They are going to be leading you in kids' worship today. Well, hey, before we get into the service this morning, I just want to call your attention uh, uh, to a prayer request that arose this morning. Uh, Sherry Hernandez uh, went to the urgent care. She had a very high heart rate uh, in the 200s. So uh, we want to be praying for Sherry. Tony is with her now. Arian and Jay are hanging out with us for the time being. But be praying for Sherry. Uh, be praying that, uh, that the doctors, the help there, will figure out what's going on and help her to, to be able to bring that heart rate down to a more healthy level. Uh, let's, let's just pray now and ask God to, uh, God to be at work uh, in her, in us, and uh, around our world. God, we bring many things with us this morning. For one thing, we, we bring our friend Sherry to you. Uh, she is encountering a, a difficult situation where she's got a really high heart rate going on. God, we ask for your help, your healing, your love. 
Uh, we ask for your presence to be felt for, for her and Tony, that as they are in the urgent care, that you would be taking care of them, that you would help them get this heart rate down to a healthy level, that, that you would just be present and bring your healing and your wisdom to the doctors and your comfort to Tony and Sherry. Be with Sherry today in a special way, we ask. God, be with us. Uh, on this Sunday that is full of excitement and joy and good things, this Palm Sunday, we ask that we encounter you. We know, we know many years ago, uh, millennia ago, you, you entered Jerusalem as Jesus. That Jesus entered Jerusalem and, and was said to be king. God, help us make you our king too. Be the king of our hearts. Be the king of our lives. And God, we eagerly await the day where you are seen as the true king of this world, where you reign and where we can bow and worship you, where we can do that fully. Be with us. Help us encounter you in a special way today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Straw poll. How many of us really look forward to Palm Sunday? Joe in the back. I see that hand. It's a good hand. I like it. Uh, several of us really like Palm Sunday. It's a good day, right? It's full of excitement and joy and, and kids waving palm branches. It is a good day. It's also our catalyst to say we are a week away from Easter. That is crazy that this year has just progressed so quickly, uh, but we, we're we going to roll with it, and we trust that we will celebrate our Lord well next week, too. Uh, we're, we're in the last week, uh, I say the last week, we'll see, I, I think there are some Old Testament tie-ins for Easter, I'm guessing there are a few, I, I say that sarcastically, there are many, but, but we're wrapping up this series uh, called uh, Finding Life in the Old Testament, where, where we have gone back to the Old Testament to see and to experience uh, some, of the, uh, some of the things that point us to life. Because it's not just the old uh, stories that, that have uh, kind of aggressive things going on and it's not useful for us. The Old Testament is just as much a part of the Bible. It is just as much Scripture. It is the Scripture that Jesus had when He was heading into Jerusalem towards His death. And we're at this, that interesting point in the year where we've been focusing on the Old Testament, but, but we are here on, on Palm Sunday. We're, we're celebrating Palm Sunday today, and what is amazing about this celebration is that it is beautiful and wonderful and is deeply entrenched in Scripture, but just not just the, the passages in the New Testament that talk about it. It is deeply entrenched in Old Testament Scripture as well. So instead of reading one of the, the New Testament accounts, one of the stories about Jesus coming in, we're, we're just going to make sure that we're all up to speed on the story. The triumphant entry is where Jesus enters Jerusalem on a donkey. He, he enters Jerusalem on a donkey. People are celebrating, they're, they're shouting, they're, they're throwing their clothes on the ground. That's what this display is meant to, to show, to emulate. They, they throw their clothes on the ground before him as he enters in as a way of respect. They, they wave palm branches and they shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessing to the one who comes in the name of the Lord. That's the story of Palm Sunday. But I'm going to take us to another passage of Scripture, and I'm going to invite you to read along with me. It's Zechariah. We're going to be in the passage uh, or the uh, book of Zechariah. It's like one of the last books in the Old Testament. If you want to get there, I'll have it up on the screen. We're going to be in Zechariah 9. And I just want to warn you, I have been accused of being a Bible nerd at various points in my life. If you are not interested in seeing your pastor in this way, this might be your point to step out. We're, we're, we're going to go a little bit, we're, we're going to go into some stuff here. So taking a deep dive, we're going to be in Zechariah 9. Let's just read that together. Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble 
riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. That is pretty well straight Palm Sunday, right? That, that we, the parallels are easy, but, but we're going to talk through them just to make sure. First of all, rejoice, people of Jerusalem. Re- rejoice, shout, uh, shout loudly, uh, shout in triumph. Clearly, the, the people of Jesus' day, the Jewish people that were in Jerusalem, they did this. They, they shouted things like, Hosanna, uh, and blessed is, uh, uh, praise God for the son of David. By the way, that son of David uh, verse is meant to... to to bring our minds back to this, your king is coming to you. They shouted, praise God for the son of David, meaning somebody in David's line, the kingly line. The crowd was shouting this, and that was about a king. But, but not just any king that, that was typical. Uh, he, he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. I've talked about this before. There were, there were two contrasting parades that Easter week. Uh, from, from the east, from uh, towards the Mediterranean Sea, Pontius Pilate came in. He came in from the east uh, on, on a white war horse, we're told, uh, with, the, with all of his Roman soldiers, these battalions marching behind him in full military regalia and this image of this governor surrounded by this legion of soldiers this image was cultivated by Rome to strike fear into the people of Jerusalem so that was that was Pontius Pilate coming in from the east I, I know if you are a youth group student here you you learned something about settings this week right you learned from the east is, means one thing. Anyone want to be put on the spot? Coming from the east is not a good thing. But then we see Jesus enter in from the west. And this is not like, this is not something that, w- that was made up that legitimately they entered from the east and west. This lined up perfectly. But Jesus came in from the west. He came in from the west riding a donkey. Donkeys are typically symbols of, of humility and peace, very different from the war horse that was ridden by Pontius Pilate, the governor. There are so many fulfillments in, in just these couple of verses for Zechariah 9.9 for Palm Sunday, but there are even more connections to be had there. This is where the Bible nerd stuff is coming. Like We're, we're going to go deep into this because... If we just look at one verse, we can see a couple of correlations, right? We can see a couple of things that go together. But, but so often when we go back to the Old Testament, we read a prophecy about Jesus and we read just this one little verse. And that's all we read and that's all we, uh, we, we don't look at the verses around it. And so when we go back to the Old Testament, especially when we're reading, when we're encountering Jesus one of the best things to do is read the verses around it. See what they have to say because we might find more than we think. So we're going we're gonna to read the next couple of verses as well. Zechariah 9, 10 through 11. And I'm going to get my, uh, my Bible out. Patrick and Robert, I'll let you guys navigate us for Scripture. Zechariah, starting at 9, starting at 10. This is the very next verse after what we just read. I will remove the battle chariots from Israel and the war horses from Jerusalem. I will destroy all weapons used in battle and your king will bring peace to the nations. His realm will stretch from sea to sea and from the Euphrates River to the ends of the earth. Because of the covenant I made with you, sealed with blood, I will free your prisoners from death in a waterless dungeon." Come back to a place of safety, all you prisoners who still have hope. I promise you this very day that I will replay two blessings for each of your troubles. There are so many more connections with Jesus here 
than if we just leave it at verse 9. So we're going we're gonna to go through some of those. Um, first off, th- this connection with uh, Jesus, or well, with God saying, I will destroy all weapons used in battle. God, God is telling us what God thinks uh, of violence here. That, that violence is not what God's goal for humanity is, right? This is not what God wants us to be about. Uh, there was somebody last week, and this was, this was before the, the school shooting that happened this last week. Uh, they had asked about a previous, uh, excuse me, there a previous uh, shooting that happened in the school, and they asked me about if if all of this violence, if this was kind of a sign of the end times, and the answer is we we don't know when the end times will be. Jesus didn't know, and and we're not smarter than Jesus, so we're we're not sure, but we recognize that violence is not what it's not what our God wants. It's not what God wants. For us, God has told us this is not God's way, and we see this very, very clearly in Jesus. I'm going to get us over to Matthew 5:44. Matthew has this to say. Jesus is saying this. Jesus says, "But I say to you, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you." Jesus' heart is not for war. Jesus' heart is for for peace to come. Our passage in in Zechariah, it continues on. Uh, Your king will bring peace to the nations. Isn't that what Jesus does? If we let Jesus take over all of our hearts, if we let Jesus uh, lead and guide us, if everybody in our world was a follower of Jesus, wouldn't peace take over the nations, and even more when, when he returns. I think I'm squeaking a lot. Robert, I might ask if we can get a handheld for me. Thank you, sir. Sorry about that. I don't want to subject you guys to the... Uh, the squeaky noises there, that's no fun for anybody. But, but Jesus, being a bringer of peace to the nations, that, that's what would happen if everyone were following after him. That's what would happen, uh, that's what we proclaim will happen when every knee will bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord, right? There will not be war, there will be peace. But I want to encourage you, listen to this next part, because this is the part where I really think that we start to see this about Jesus so clearly. This is uh, back in verse uh, 11 here, Zechariah 9, 11. Because of the covenant I made with you, sealed with blood, I will free your prisoners from death in a waterless dungeon. I will free your prisoners from death. I mean, we, we could take this literally, sure. We could take this to be about, you know, prisoners of war that, that were taken from Israel, and, and we know that the exile eventually ended and that the people of Israel were allowed to come back to Israel. But look at it. The, the, reference, is, the reference is it's sealed with blood. This covenant is sealed with with blood, that, that makes me think of what Jesus did on the cross, right? That, that Jesus died on the cross and, and that this new covenant was sealed with God's blood. God offers us through this, that God offers this, this freedom, this, this rescue, this freeing of prisoners through his death and resurrection that we'll talk about next Sunday for Easter. Because uh, we are prisoners. We don't like to talk about that very often. Uh, but but the Bible talks about us as uh, about human beings as prisoners. Paul says it another way. He talks about us uh, as slaves, not like the evil of slavery that happened here in the Americas, but that we are we are slaved, enslaved people to something. That that something has us enslaved. That enslaved. That we are held captive to something. We're held captive to sin. We're held captive uh, to, by the enemy, by, by the devil. But there is another way. 
The, the next verse here in Zechariah, Zechariah, the first part of verse 12. Return to your fortress, you prisoners who still have hope. This is the NIV translation. It's, this passage is translated several ways, uh, but this says, Return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. People that are imprisoned, that are held captive, not by sin, not by death, not by evil, the devil, Satan, but are held captive by hope. Return to your fortress. And that just made me think this week, a mighty fortress is our God. We're supposed to return to our God. We're supposed to come back to him. We're supposed to be held captive by the hope that he gives, by the hope that is Jesus. And I can tell. We, we, we just went through a lot there, right? We, we went in deep. Uh, this, is, this is for our, online, or for our uh, in-person crew only, I know. Some of you are looking at me like this fellow, like the crazed conspiracy guy, Yeah. I, I felt this way all this week. There were like so many different pieces that I was trying to bring together. I felt like this guy with the bloodshot eyes talking about how everything is connected. But it is. That's the thing. It is all connected. It is all connected together. And I don't want to look crazy like that dude did. But one of the beautiful things about serving our God is that it is all connected together. Because God has been at work for this salvation plan for a long time. Since the very beginning, he was working on saving us human beings because that is how much our God loves us. That's how much he cares. Uh, the the so-called gods of other religions, uh, it, it sure doesn't look like they care about their followers as much just if, if their followers are doing the right things, right? That, that's what I've observed in, in many of the other religions, just doing the right stuff. If I can impress upon you two things from today, it is that God cares about us. That's why Jesus came to earth for Palm Sunday, for the triumphal entry, to, to enter, to be shown as king, to be killed, executed within the week, and then to be raised to life as a way of showing us all that we will be saved by him. God deeply, deeply loves you. God deeply loves all of humankind. He, he deeply loves you. He loves your family. He loves your neighbors. He loves your enemies. He loves everybody and wants everybody to come to know him. Our God is not some distant, uncaring God that, that just sits up in the clouds or above the clouds or something and, and sits by and watches. Our God loves us so much so that he came and sacrificed himself for us. So the first thing I want you to know, know that God loves loves you so deeply. The second thing is an action step. It's that we're invited. We are invited to be like him. Now, within reason, I want to say if you try to walk on water, my guess you're probably going to get wet. Uh, unless you're specifically following Jesus and he's asked you to, in which case I'm not quite sure what will happen, but I trust him. But, but if you try and do some of the things Jesus did, like walk on water, you're likely to get wet. But, but Jesus invites us to, to be like him in other ways, to, to value what he values. Uh, in, in this passage alone, we, we have several things to value. Being righteous, doing right things, righteous and justice, those are the same word in the Old Testament. So, being righteous is a, a personal thing, doing the right things for myself. Justice is an external thing, doing and acting justly, not just me, but how I affect other people. Being righteous, just, and victorious, yet humble. Not, not lording it over people, not, not being a jerk like sometimes we can get as people. Being a peacemaker, following God wherever He calls you to. We, we see all of this in Palm Sunday. We see all of this in Zechariah 9. Another value that we see in Palm Sunday in Zechariah 9, 
be somebody who values people deeply. So deeply that you want people to be freed from death. Freed from the clutches of the enemy. Freed from whatever is entangling them. Be people that love others so much that you want them to encounter Jesus because he's the way to get out. He, he's the way to experience the goodness, the truth, the life, the way. Like we talked about last week, sometimes when we talk to others about Jesus, uh, the, it, the world looks at us and, and thinks of us as ridiculous. I want to acknowledge that. Nobody likes feeling ridiculous. You guys didn't like feeling ridiculous when you paraded around last week. I, I know that. You're, it's okay. You admitted it to me. It's fine. We, we don't like feeling ridiculous, but even when the world looks at us and thinks of us as ridiculous, Helping people come to know Jesus, helping people come to know God's love and grace and mercy and truth is worth it. Uh, there was somebody from our church that went out for the last couple of months and was helping people come to know Jesus. So, Jesse, I'm going to invite you to come up and talk to us for a minute or two about what you experienced. Uh, you've, you've been back now for... Two Sundays? Yeah, come on up here and tell us about your experiences and how you saw Jesus at work and how you were able to help introduce people to Jesus. Yeah, so I just went on tour all, all up and down the East Coast for the past eight weeks, and we traveled 8,000 miles. Um, so it was a really fun but crazy trip, and we got to see so many salvations and just got to pray over so many students. And so the main focus of our tour was going to high schools and um, youth groups. And so in these high schools that we got to go to, we joined the Jesus clubs that were already established, but we were able to bring in students that wouldn't normally show up or come. And we would just pray for them, um, and we would give a gospel message. And there was one day in particular we were at a public high school, and the teacher asked us to stay the entire day. And so we got to preach the gospel in five um, class periods in a row. And during that time, we saw 37 salvations. Um, and so the harvest really is ripe, and people do want to hear the good news that we have to share. Um, we also saw um, several healings on our trip as well. I remember we went to one youth group, and this girl... She had been dealing with anxiety and depression for five years, and so her anxiety had actually caused her to have like really, really bad chronic neck and back pain that she had been dealing with for those five years. Um, and so I just got the chance to pray for her, and um, I asked her if she felt any better, and she said, a little bit when you were praying. And so I was like, can I just pray again? Like, it's working. And so I prayed again, and she's like, yeah, it's getting better. And so on the third try, um, she was completely healed. She had no pain. Um, and so that was just such a beautiful moment of just seeing the faithfulness of God and just that he really does want to um, encounter his people and show his love. Um, but we just have to be obedient and um, willing to do what he calls us to do and step out. And so, yeah, I during our tour, my team of nine saw um, 214 salvations and 105 rededications. Um, and so, <laughs> yeah, that's literally amazing. Um, and we saw six healings. And so that was just one team of 25 um, teams. And so, um, yeah, God is really moving in this generation. And I'm just so glad that I got to be a part of um, what was going on on the East Coast these past couple of weeks. Thanks, Jesse. Appreciate it. And, I, and we appreciate you sharing stories with us. Would you be okay if people asked you and wanted to talk with you a little bit more? You'd be willing to share some stories. If you're interested, go, go talk to her. I hear all the time, you know, people saying, well, it looks like our, our world's going to hell in a handbasket, right? People are so concerned that, that things are, are all, all going terribly. And, and the reality is our, our enemy is at work. That, that, that is a reality. Satan is at work in this world, but so is our God. And I got to tell you, out of the two, I think I already know the winner, right? 
I'm, I'm pretty sure he proved it on Easter, and I'm pretty sure that, that he is going to take over this world in justice and love and mercy and goodness and truth. Uh, God is at work, and we get to participate along with him. As we walk into this Easter week, this week starts Holy Week, right? Holy Week, the week before Easter. As we walk into this Easter week, the challenge I want to leave with us, keep your eyes on Jesus. Where is he at work? What is he doing? What's he doing in you? What's he doing in other people? What is he doing in our world? We can do that a number of ways. We can look at where is Jesus in the Bible. I've put together a couple of scripture verses. When the sermon ends, I'll leave these up on the screen after the service for us. Uh, so if you want to write some of these down, you can. For our online friends, you can just pause the YouTube right there and that'll work. But, but encounter Jesus in some of these scriptures. Where, where is Jesus at work in our world? Do you, do you see God moving? Uh, we, we hear about things like what Jesse talked about. That's God moving in our world through us, through people, through human beings. There are good things happening, light and life and goodness See Jesus in our world. And finally, I want to ask you to see if Jesus is at work in your own lives. I've, I've asked a, a number of people, and I'm going to just throw this out to the whole congregation. I've been filming little 10, 15 second videos this week asking people, how have you encountered Jesus lately? How have you encountered Jesus lately? And, I, and I'm going to take these videos and we're going to put them together and we're going to share and celebrate on Easter Sunday. We encounter Jesus because he is alive. He is real. He is moving. And he is at work in our world. So if you would be able to say in a sentence or two how you've encountered Jesus lately, come, come find me after the service. I'll, I'll have my phone up and be able to take a quick video of you there. Uh, for right now, I want to give one quick prayer update just really quickly before Sherry uh, Hernandez just texted me. She said, they're sending me to the hospital. There's an abnormal ECG. Uh, so uh, be praying for Sherry. We're going to pray for her. We're going to pray for God to be a moving in us. But let's, let's pray and let's ask God to move. God, would you move today? We know you're at work. You've been at work for the last, you've been at work for as long as our world has been around. There, there is no point at which you were not at work, God. We trust in you. God, we trust you with Sherry that, that as she's experiencing this abnormal ECG, that you would take care of her, that you would be with her, that you would uh, just uh, help her to be okay. Uh, help the uh, doctors to know what they need to do and, and to take care of her and Tony well. God, for us, help us be like you. Help us be like you in the ways we can be as peacemakers, as people who love others, as people that are forgiving, as people that, that want your goodness to reign, as people who care for those who need help. God, help us be like you and help us see you at work. See you at work in our world. See you at work in our church. See you at work in our own lives. Help us see you this week. Help us keep our eyes focused on you. We ask and we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Church family, may you keep your eyes focused on Jesus this week. Keep watching him and see how he moves. Blessings to you. Go in peace.